Listeners and Merry Christmas! Today we are proud to present our tenth annual Christmas Spectacular. We have collected for your listening pleasure a fine collection of Christmas horrors, and even a few genuinely good tales of mirth. Lord knows we have spent the whole of the year sending shivers down your spine. It's only fair that during this special time we warm your heart. It is a special time of year indeed, made all the more special by Guernica brand dessert on the bottom canned ham. Our special holiday blend is topped with beautiful rich honeyed ham and bottomed by a delicious fruitcake. The ham juice makes the fruitcake tender. Think tiramisu, but with more fruit and patented ham juice, now completely free of lead paint. As a warning to our listeners, it does include some natural flavors. Sorry for that, dear listener, uh, but with the added expense of gifts, we need our sponsor more than ever this time of year. You know, friends, during our first Christmas special, the slanted hallway was barely heard outside of Milwaukee. But now, ten years on, we are proud to say that the creatures of the night have infected over six countries. Our first tale of Yuletide terror comes from our friends across the pond. That's right, Merry West Germany. They've written this little broadcast specially for us, and recorded some of it in English, too. Our first gift of the evening... Dies V. Dies V. The German one. <laughs> Guten Abend, Sahara! Ja, ein sehr guter Abend! Ich hoffe, dass Sie nicht dachten, wir waren bekommen zur Nacht in Ist. Nein, heute Abend haben wir ein Geschick von August von Lannen im Hörer für Sie. Sicher, die zwei Jungs mit Lächeln! Oh, August! Looking at what Papa has brought in me! What is das, Helmut? Cotton candy! Oh, Helmut! How I love the cotton candies! Yeah, they are so good! Oh, do you have any more of the candy? I am having as much as I like, for it is American Christmas! Zeit! Ah, what good fortune we have! Let us do the dancing and the eating! Let us be singing! Tra la la! Tra la 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 la! What flavors have you? I have both blue and pink! Pink. Those are my favorite! Mine as well. That is why I them was given. I love to be eating of them. Oh, mine later hosen are becoming sticky. Mine as well! <laughs> we have eaten all of it. Hooray! But we are no longer cotton candy having. And mine stomach is being becoming. Oh! <laughs> Das Ende für Lich Weihnachten. That was it? I thought it would be longer. Good Lord, they must have sent over a hundred feet of tape. No matter. The, 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 the slanted hallway always has a few ghoulish tales nested deep within its slants. Today will be no exception. 
Christmas means many things to many people. This next story shows that sometimes the true meaning of Christmas comes not from what you give, nor what you receive, but rather uh, how you interpret the gift. It's something like that. Think gift of the Magi, but somewhat different. Just, just, just listen to it. Another bum year for me. That's how history's gonna remember this one, that's for sure. You know, I always thought I'd be a big star. I thought I was gonna make my name in vaudeville. I learned to juggle and everything. When I tells you, I could sling one-liners with the best of them. Honest, I could. Darren Curmudgeon. My name and big ol' incandescent lights. Then they got rid of vaudeville, and then there was the Depression, the war, and that was kind of fun. And the neon, whatever that's supposed to be. Now look at me. An old tramp sitting in an alleyway, setting the scene by talking to an old beer can. At least you listen to me, beer can. Yeah, well, stay out! You think you're better than me just because at some point someone wanted you, huh? Just because you've been to a party? Oh, look, see, I didn't mean that. You're, you're like the only friend I got. I've been kicking you for days. Oh, all that smokes, that figures. That's just the way things are gonna be, huh? I guess it ain't all that bad being a tramp. I got these neat fingerless gloves, this stylish top hat. Sure, the top's almost completely off, but no, oh, but almost ain't all the way. Oh, well, that's all the way. Ah, oh, jeez. Another Christmas alone. Another year unfulfilled. I just wish one thing in my life would go the way I planned. Just one thing, anything. That works out for old Darren. I guess that's too much to ask for. Ugh. Huh? No! No! I don't believe my eyes! It's gotta be a booze! Oh, wait. I don't drink! Then it's real! All oh, those barrel fire stories were true! The Christmas pig is real! Oh, Christmas pig! I ask but one thing a place of my own, a family, a job. Well, that's three things, but you get the idea. I want to be somebody. I want to have the life I always dreamed of. I would be eternally grateful for that Christmas pig. And with that one sound uttered, Darren's life changed completely. The magic of the... Christmas pig? Really? The magic of the Christmas pig swirled around him, and in an instant he was transported to his new life, a clock set back to Christmas Eve, and Darren Curmudgeon, star of stage and screen, was making preparations for his annual Christmas party. Oh, butler, do me a favor and ring up the butcher. We've got everything else we need for the party. And what were you thinking, sir? Oh, I don't care all that much. It's Christmas, after all. Why, our guests would be happier with anything. Might as well go traditional, then. Perfect! You can't be traditional at this time of year. I'll do it straight away, sir. Look at me. Everything I've ever wanted, all from a pig. I guess the Episcopalians were right. Lex procandi, lex credendi. I guess I'm the only one who remembers that I was a bum. Heck, that butler guy thinks I've been his boss for over a decade. How do you like that? Darren Curmudgeon, a legend. For over ten years. Well, I ain't gonna let all this fancy stuff get to me. I've given back this year and every year. I'll keep on giving till there isn't a single bum left on the street. Everyone is gonna know what it's like to spend Christmas indoors. Sir, I've just called the butcher. I'm afraid we're too late. They're all out of ham. Butler, are you sure? As sure as I am a valet. Ah, jeez. It ain't Christmas without ham, or turkey, or goose, or occasionally a rabbit, depending on your ethnic background. Might I make a suggestion, sir? Shoot, buddy. 
Has sir ever heard tell of a potluck? No, but I do enjoy the sound of the word. Very good. Sir, what it involves is all the people you invite bring their own dish, and then there's food enough for everyone. Phenomenal idea, Bottles! Well, do that. Rearrange everything so people know what's going on. Oh, and if, and if, and if they like it, would you mind telling everybody it was my idea? As you like it. Just one more thing, Butts. I have a name. Uh, sorry, you're right. Uh, well, Mr. Butler, would you mind inviting some of the neighborhood bums? The ones from the alley? Sir, you can't be serious. I am serious. I want the guys who harmonize over the barrel fire every night. It's about time I started giving back. And with interest. As you wish. It is a very kind gesture, sir, but I'm not sure how your guests will take it. Hey! I'm Darren Curmudgeon. They'll be grateful just for getting a chance to look at me. Who cares if the room smells like pee? All right, all right, everybody. Me. All right, okay, now, everybody calm down. Please, I have a few words I'd like to say. You know, this is a very special time of year. A time for giving and receiving. A time to look back on the year that's been. A time to count your blessings. Now, everyone here at this potluck has got a lot of blessings to count. We're some of the most highly powered members of the entertainment industry. We're set for life. But in the spirit of Christmas, I asked old Butler Ball here to invite some very special guests. And I expect you to treat them as well as you would anyone else here. They're a little bit more down on their luck than we are. But I assure you, they're good people. People I knew well in another life. Your special guests, sir! Let them in! A two, three. Swinging pad you got here, mister. Sure beats that trash can I've been sleeping in. Good sir, you sleep in a trash can. All right, fine. A cardboard box. What a nice one. Oh, my God. All right, it's a fine box. A at least an okay one. It's an old newspaper. I sleep under an old newspaper. But it's the Sunday one. No, it ain't. Fine, I sleep under the sports section of an October 1933 issue of the Cincinnati Herald. I don't even know how I got it. Never mind how, you're here now and it's about time you got some good food. Actually, sure, we brought a little something too. We heard it was potluck style. It's a Christmas ham, fresh as can be. You just gotta heat it up. Ham! You know I've been craving it since yesterday. I thought every shop in New York was all out. Now, ah, never mind, let's dig in. What do you say, everybody? All right, here I am, cutting into the ham, serving it to a bunch of guests. Boy, look at how amazing everything looks. You wouldn't want to miss what I'm seeing now. Every, everyone got enough of the ham? All right, I guess it's my turn to play dead. Let me just cut into this ham, right? And now, moving my fork to my right hand, for some reason, I pick some up. Oh, delicious! No, the best ham I've ever had. Thank you, bums. This is the best Christmas I've ever... Say, say does anyone else smell trash and urine? In my hand. What, what, when did I put on these fingerless gloves? My coat, it, it's falling to tatters. The ham! You, you, you idiots killed the Christmas pig! No! 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 <laughs> Darren! 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 Come on, buddy, wake up! <laughs> so what's going on? Nothing, bud. You just passed out pretty good. I think that ham we stole went bad. So I'm not a rich celebrity? Uh, you're rich in friends. Really? No, not really. Get out of my alley, you lousy bum! We're fine. Celebrity, huh? I guess it was all too good to be true anyhow. I'm a bum, I've always been a bum, and I'm always going to be. 
Merry Christmas to me. What in the world? Well, I'll be. Maybe there really is a little magic in the world after all. Well, look at that. Even during the merry month of December, the slanted hallway can claim a victim. To anyone who tuned in a little late to that previous broadcast, he started out as a bum, too. I wonder how good that Christmas potlet was. It sounded good enough to be your last meal. I wonder what yours will be. Don't forget, Mr. Narrator, tonight's story is brought to us lovingly by Guernica Brand Dessert on the bottom canned ham. Just pop the top, turn it over, and give the hand a light tapping. Once it slushes out, that slushes, S-L-U-S-H, the term scientists use to describe wonderfully preserved flavor making contact with fresh air. You know you're in for a fine meal. Ah, uh, yes. I am contractually obligated to suggest that the only food I've ever eaten is canned ham. So I guess that will be our collective last ever meal. Dear listeners, if there's one thing we can be sure about the holiday season, it's that all the stories are basically exactly the same. The difference comes in the telling. Thankfully, for me anyway, all these tales come express direct from the slanted hallway, and the delivery was certified by Death himself. This little tale of Christmas, well, it's not exactly horror, I guess there's a way of looking at it as a thriller. Although you can't look at stories. I guess you do when you read them. But that's more looking at words or something. No matter. The story begins in the little shop of one Ray Miller, a down-on-his-luck shop owner, who's in his shop. Right now. Thank you, sir. Have a Merry Christmas. Well, it was nice having a customer for once. I thought this whole small-town shop owner thing would be, uh, I don't know, easier, I guess? I show up here at like 10 in the morning or, or whenever business is supposed to open, and then I just sit here, wiping down this beer glass, slinging candies to kids and other stuff to adults. Gosh, with the way things have been going, I'll be lucky if I could pay off October's bills. Hoping for a Christmas with my family? That's a fool's dream. All right, children, file in. Yes, yes, just like that. Be sure not to touch anything. My God, it smells like a dump in here. Merry Christmas, sir, and welcome to Miller's General Store and Manure. How can I be of any help? Yes, as a matter of fact, I'm looking for a bunch of toys for my kids. You brought your children shopping for their own presents? That's right. I do have everything you want. A family I get to spend a lot of time with, money I get to spend a lot of, and a thriving general store just across the street from you. Gosh, that's the life. But maybe I'm rich in ways you couldn't even imagine. Like in Friends. No, wrong. I've got more of those than you, too. I'm more than content, sir. I'm genuinely, deeply, and lastingly happy. Now to return to the matter at hand, did you have any toys for my children? Well, it's a general store, and as you've already established, I don't. Well, there's another thing I have over you, and I don't even know who you are. Oh, well, I'm Ray Miller. I've got a wife and two kids... And what? Enough of this. Just give me a chocolate Victoria Cross, and I'll be on my way. That'll be eight cents, sir. Have a Merry Christmas. Well, I've been here about 20 minutes. Or maybe that clock broke. Either way, it's time for old Ray to hit the hay. That guy really had it all. The family, the money, shoes, everything. Come on, Ray, pull yourself out of it. You never got nowhere being envious. Sure, being jealous has worked out once or twice, and a fair bit of your coveting has come through. What was I talking about? Right, that guy. I, I sure wish I had everything he had. I wish I had more than him. I want what he's got times ten. What did he ever do to earn all that? Huh? When's my turn gonna come? I guess things just don't work out for guys like me. All I've ever wanted was to be able to give my kids a nice Christmas. I'd need a good business to do that. Gosh, I'd need to know where my kids are. It would take a miracle for Raymond, Augustine, well-bred, moneyed family miller to turn this old store around. Merry Christmas. Who are you collecting for? 
is for the needy. The attention seeking? The impoverished. Well, fine then. From one pauper to another. Thank you, sir, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, listeners, how do you like that? Sometimes the greatest twist is having no twist at all. Sometimes the slanted hallway is just bleak. Anyway, let's check out the B-side of this record. Should be one grand slam, thank you ma'am kind of twist. Whoa! How do you like that for a twist? Who shot Ray Miller? Oh, the title of this side is Ray Miller by himself. Wow. Merry Christmas, everyone. Phew. Um, so, this next one we've got for you is a trim little uh, 4 minute 45 second long tale related to Christmas. So it was around Christmas time in, uh, in, in Israel. It was about to be Christmas. It was the first Christmas Eve, just before the first Christmas. But it was during the daytime. It was the day before the first Christmas. In an inn in Israel. In Bethlehem. So just outside Bethlehem that day, there was a very pregnant Mary and Joseph. Fella, he was in over his head. Mary was about to give birth, and they had nowhere to stay that night. God, what was he thinking? That's why you gotta make your reservations ahead of time, folks. You know, compared to the other stories within our vault of horrors, this one's pretty light. However, you may find that this story of Christmas has a bit of a new twist, a scary slant, if you will. Really, though, that Joseph, he must have been awful suspicious of that whole God's baby deal. Desert sure is warm, said Joseph, wiping sweat from his brow. Harder than you'd think, even for the desert, you know, he said to his incredibly pregnant wife Mary. Her heaving belly carried more than just baby stuff. In it was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I bet you weren't expecting that one. Well, anyway, they were hoofing it in the desert, Mary up on that donkey with her heaving belly, and our friend Joseph taking a little-known form of public transportation called the Shoe Leather Express. <laughs> shoe, shoe Leather Express. That's a good one. I'll just write that down. Well, anyway, they found themselves outside a little inn. The Bethlehem Motor Inn. Teeming with all the luxuries you'd expect from a motor inn. That is to say, none of them. The ice machine had broken several days before. The vending machine was stocked with figs. Even if that ice machine was working, in a place as hot as this, the ice machine really functions more as a cool water machine. Room temperature, really. No matter. The point is that it was hot, and the inn was terrible. Well, our friend Joseph thought this was an ideal location for the birth of the Son of God. He entered the inn, leaving his pregnant wife to sit out on that smelly donkey in the beating sun. Hello, spake Joseph. Have you a room for a young married couple, one of whom is about to perform the messiest functions of the body? The innkeeper looked at him as you'd expect, and then remembered the security deposit he'd be collecting. Of course, right this way, sir. The innkeeper showed Joseph the way to his room, room 204, meaning that Mary and the donkey would have to navigate the stairs up to the room Joseph had specifically requested. 
He had stayed here before and knew this room to get particularly good reception. So in that little room on the second floor of the Bethlehem Motor Inn, Mary and Joseph and Dominic, the lovable Italian donkey, winnowed away at the hours, desperately awaiting something good to come on the television. Their peace was interrupted by the sound of the innkeeper and his wife fighting in the next room. Through the wall, they could hear the muffled shouting that only comes from a life wasted in poverty. "'We have no food,' cried the woman, probably. "'You never cook any food,' cried the innkeeper. "'That's because you never bring any food home,' said the woman. "'It went something like that, anyway.' Joseph complained that he couldn't hear them too well. Mary wept. Dominic whinnied a powerful whinny that signaled good things to come. As the fighting continued, a gaggle of ungrateful children materialized outside the window of room 204. Yuch, children, remarked Joseph. Mary stared at him angrily. What? asked Joseph. Oh, yeah, right, he continued. Joseph moved to the door and swung it open wide. Hello, children, Joseph bellowed. What wonderful thing are you all up to? The children shuffled their feet and began nervously twisting the bottom of their tunics. We are up to no wonderful thing, said the tallest boy. We are hungry, and Papa says that if we just jump around the sun long enough, we'll be too tired to feel hunger any more. Good man, thought Joseph, but he knew not to say it. You know, kiddos, my wife is about to have a baby, so soon you'll have a new friend to play with. Would you like to watch her give birth? The children all jumped with joy, and the weakest among them passed out from the exhaustion, his weak knees shattering beneath his meager frame. What Joseph didn't know is that the children, and their father, the innkeeper, and their mother, who chose not to work, had concocted a plan. They were going to consume the infant Christ the moment it fell for Mary, as you or I might an apple. Joseph and the innkeeper's family, and Dominic the donkey, danced to the rhythm of Mary's in-pain screams as the labor progressed. The innkeeper and his wife had mastered the art of sharpening cutlery such that they could pass it as a terrible ethnic folk dance. Then, finally, after much fanfare and rejoice, the babe Jesus was born. I would describe the actual birth, but I'm not entirely certain how that works. Then, just as the innkeeper's family was about to cut into the baby, something wonderful happened. An old merchant, dressed in red, driving a sleigh of eight tiny camels, arrived at the inn. Sant Alcalos came to deliver the first Christmas ham. Ho, 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 he cried, and his belly shook from the laughter. Who's ready for their Christmas ham? The family began to weep with joy, and Joseph and Mary looked around, wondering if anyone was going to explain what was going on. Thank you, Mary, and thank you, Joseph. Now that Jesus is here, I can finally start distributing all these hams to the good children of the world. And with that, his beard turned as white as snow, the palm trees became evergreens, and the eight tiny camels became eight tiny reindeer. And somehow uh, also gained the gift of flight. And that, dear listeners, is the story of the first Christmas as remembered by yours truly. Good night and Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. <laughs> Thank you.